Hey guys, welcome back to Radical Living Podcast. Hope you had an amazing Easter. Not that we can do that much, but hopefully you made the most of it um, with the people that you love. This episode, I sat down with the current Northern Ireland International Women's Goalkeeper, Jackie Burns. And in this episode, we have a look over uh, Jackie's football career so far, um, as well as uh, discuss how her and a few other players have uh, started and began to pave the way um, for the next generation of girls in football. Um, and Myself and Jackie also chat about how to be radical and how to not be afraid um, in pursuing our dreams really hope that you enjoy this episode and what Jackie has to share um, and also just want to give Northern Ireland um, women's international football team a big shout out on this podcast episode as they are uh, currently playing in the UEFA Women's Euro Playoffs so we hope that um, the staff, uh, the coaches and the players have a very successful campaign so guys hope you enjoy this episode um, and I'll see you at the end. Jackie, thanks so much for joining me uh, today just to chat a little bit about you, about your journey um, and what you've been up to and kind of what's in store for you next. Um, just to kick us off, I'm going to ask you, and we've already chatted briefly about this before we come on, but what is your favourite football team? Uh, thanks. Thanks for having me. Um, it was the first question I read when I got the text through and I kind of <laughs> thought and looked at my mum and I goes, mum, what do I say to this question? Because... Yeah. Um, like I honestly I don't really support any team right yeah, now. Yeah. Um the way it worked out. Uh maybe maybe Tottenham. Yeah. Just they they have a good strong setup yeah, there. Yeah, they do. Uh, Larice, I think's a yeah. very inspirational goalkeeper. Yep. That uh, I would kinda go yeah. along that line. They've got a really good team at the minute. Yeah. Really exactly. like Belt Mourinho's done a good job. And and their their woman setup's pretty good too. Yeah, it is. Obviously, Alex, Alex Morgan. Morgan. Yeah, big signing, big yeah. signing, big steps for them. No, definitely. So Tottenham. Tottenham. We'll go with that. We'll go Tottenham. I'll have to just that, that might not slide. agree with a few other people, but not me, no. But sorry, <laughs> sorry, no, it's okay. Because <laughs> that's something I'm quite interested in as a coach. Like, um, I've had people come to me and say about like their little girl. You know would you put them in with an all-girls team or would you mix mix her in with a guys team? Did you find playing with guys helped your development as a player? I'd say it did, yeah. yeah. Like, um, y- y- obviously, you never, at my age, it was it was a bit unnatural to have a, yeah. a girl set-up type thing. Yes. And it was unnatural to see a girl playing in a boys' yeah. team. But yeah. I see every time I went with the boys team and you went to and saw an opponent and then another girl, you were absolutely yeah. um, ecstatic. <laughs> I buzzed. You're like, you, you couldn't believe it. Like, there's there's someone else playing yeah, football. Yeah, yeah. So I, I actually remember going to Dungannon to a team and playing and I walked out on the pitch and they were all like, is, is that another girl standing yeah. there? And I was like, oh my goodness. It is. And I was absolutely... <laughs> yeah over the moon to see another girl playing yeah. and then I think she ended up scoring against me and that oh, kind of changed, yeah. changed my mood against yeah. me. But... Um, yeah, honestly, I'd say gr- growing up playing for the boys was great for me and it, yeah. it kind of helped like physicality type thing because yeah. you kind of look at younger people and they, they don't see a difference between a boy and a girl playing yeah. now. Yeah. And you... It's just great. It, it is great. Yeah. And honestly, like at that age, you, you're just happy to be playing. Yeah, fun. Yeah, exactly. And you take a knock, some, someone will knock you down yeah. and they're not shouting at you because you're yeah. a girl, you're, you're, you've fallen down, you're, you're yeah. getting back up and you're, yeah. you're I, think that's, I think that's kind of where you yeah. get like the fighting attitude from, like, yeah. oh, I've just got knocked down by a guy, <laughs> I'm just going to go and sh- do the same back to him. Yeah, and go and get him. And he'd probably not care type yeah. thing. So, yeah. yeah, I think growing up playing for the boys actually impacted a lot Yeah. whenever I was getting into it. Yeah. Like, it, it really did help and... I, I know a lot of the girls that I do play with definitely went through that same setup as yeah. me. Well, probably whenever you started playing, like at that young age, there wouldn't have been like a lot of girls, like all girls teams. Yeah. Like that's only recently been coming through. Mm-hmm. Um, is that right? Yeah. yeah like no, it would have just been boys. Yeah, big time. Like obviously yeah. it, it would have been more of a boys sport type thing. Yeah, and yeah. it was kind of like the way it was brought up, but the ones who wanted to be different and wanted to go down that line did go and play football and yeah. it's it wasn't bad. Like 
you, you got a few of those people who were kind of like, this is unnatural to see. Yeah. But once they saw you play, they were kind of like contradicting themselves. Yeah. Like, this is great. Uh, good. <laughs> I, I think it's brilliant. I think it's, uh, but it's, it's so great to see the girls football. You know, there are a lot more all girls teams now and um, like even starting like really young. Um, and going all the way through, mm-hmm. probably some of the bigger clubs. Um, so it's it's great to see, like, mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, no, that's that's brilliant. It's actually quite similar to me. I never like played at any level, but I just loved playing football. Um, that was actually my mate. Uh, he he like loved it when we were younger, and that's kind of how <laughs> I get interested in it too. And just went along. I remember playing with like all. It was just all boys. Like, there was no girls at all. So it's great seeing the development and that type thing. Exactly. Yeah. Um, but I'm just I'm I'm really interested to hear. I I obviously I kind of look at this from a a faith perspective or a different perspective. But this podcast is Radical Living podcast. So for you, what would you say radical means? Radical to me was like to me personally was probably taking that plunge and going yeah. over going over stateside. Yeah, like I could have stayed here in my comfort zone and just yeah. been happy to stay here and yeah do university but I went and decided to move to America for four years yeah. and thought uh is this is this a good idea is this a bad idea and yeah. it's kind of one of those things you don't know until you try it yeah and to me that's probably like what radical is is yeah. that you have to kind of like push yourself out there yeah and develop into yeah. that and see what happens yeah get outside your box type thing yeah and it, it really is pushing <laughs> yourself out of your comfort zone yeah. like you you don't think, all right, well, I'm, I'm mayb- maybe people think pushing yourself out of comfort zone. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll go down to Belfast to go to uh, university. I'll, I'll, go to, I'll go to England maybe. I'll go to America. I, I, I just was like, nah, <laughs> maybe I'll just go to America and see what happens after yeah. that. But yeah, yeah. so America was kind of like my my push out of my comfort zone. And it's, it <laughs> definitely was. Yeah, yeah. We'll get, we'll get to that in a wee <laughs> second because I'm really interested to hear kind of your experience of the US and I think, just what you said there about being radical, it's change and it's going out of your comfort zone and pushing yourself. And even if it makes you feel uncomfortable at the time, there's like growth mm-hmm. after it, which is what I love about it. And I touched on it really briefly. And before we get to um, that move you made to America, just kind of run everybody through who's listening, just your career timeline. So I, as I said, I started off when I yep. was eight years old at Cookstown Youth, um, went through their setup till about under 13s maybe yep. and then was amalgamated with mid Ulster ladies yep who is the local team in cookstown and i kind of started with them in the younger setup playing in young leagues and going away every saturday yeah enjoying myself <laughs> and then um when i was 15 it was the time to go play in the big league yeah with the big girls yep um Big big step, not gonna lie. Um, I was just used to playing yeah. playing little small sided, enjoying yeah. myself, and then what would that have been? Seven, five aside, seven aside. Yeah, seven aside. Seven yeah. aside. Little small goals and everything. Oh you felt boy. you felt great. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> hardly any rules or anything. Big jump. Uh, yeah, big jump is right. Um, then I went straight into them. Um, bigger pitch, bigger yeah. competitors, bigger bigger goal. Yeah, <laughs> and by this point you were like you had established you were a goalkeeper. Yeah, yeah. At this, at it was from that young age, playing with the guys is when I, yeah, I was like I'm a goalkeeper. Aye. that's when I was, I, I found my happy place. There. Yeah, <laughs> didn't have to mingle with them as much either. No, no, no. <laughs> just jumping in front of the the ball. Just jumping in front of the ball a bit. Um, yeah. So then I I, I was in Mid Ulster at fifteen. And we played in the Premiership the entire time I was there, up against all the big teams like Crusaders and Glentorn and cool. Linfield, and it was great. And we had a, we had great seasons and mm-hmm. went on played in Irish Cup finals, which you wouldn't Class. expect a wee small country country team to be doing yeah. that. Um, and competing with them and finish, I think we finished third in one of our seasons wow. as well, which was amazing for us. Yeah. Um. And I was lucky that through that setup, I had a team that we we had a lot of a lot of talent. Yeah. And obviously, I had people to look up to like the likes of Simone McGill, yeah. who was a yeah. local girl too, <laughs> yeah. and she she helped 
liked us and yeah. the way we wanted to play and yeah. she was an inspiration to yeah ob- like me growing up too yep. because i was like well she's great yeah. <laughs> i was yeah i always remember playing with her and i goes gosh she's she's gonna she's gonna do something yeah. and it's gonna be amazing to see where she's gonna Just end new. up and yeah. that's where you kind of thought it's like a wonder can i do the same yeah yeah so then we we had a great setup with that and obviously ones around my age there was a lot of us in the international setup too yeah. and that was the team that pushed me to go on and be in that international setup and they got me in there at under 15 mm-hmm. so I started the international ladder at very good maybe about 14 years old starting on under 15s and playing big jump again another big <laughs> jump is right yeah uh that's we started off playing in the Bob Dockery tournament, which was okay. like Wales, England, Ireland. Okay. And uh, again, it, it was unbelievable. Like, yeah. that was the first time you, you pull on the shirt and you're like, oh my goodness, I'm, I'm representing my country yeah, right now. Class. And it, it was it was just that feeling of pride that you're yeah. actually doing something that you want and you're representing your country for yeah. it. And obviously after that, under 15s, I was with them for two years and made the step up in the 17s. And then that's when things got a bit more serious. You weren't just playing your local countries, you were were going and playing in European countries then. Class. (laughs) (laughs) It just kept getting more and more. Yeah, Um, just steamrolled from there. Yeah, really did. Um, So I, I, I played with the... I went in an international setup and played seventeens then, and yeah. we we done we done something that was unknown to everyone. Like we we would be ranked like third or fourth out of th- four teams. Yeah, and like, yeah, they're not they're not qualifying for anything. Yeah, and first year I was there, we had the strongest team possible maybe, and went on and I th- we topped our group that year. Wow. and it was the best feeling ever. Yeah, um, so done that there and went to France and played in an elite level against France, Spain and Finland and again S- unbelievable experience yeah. like seeing the difference between their level and our level it's would there be a big difference? There at that point yes. Yeah. Like you don't like that's the step up like we we're, we're we're a small country. Yeah. <laughs> like yeah. we're still developing what we're yeah. doing right now and you can you can see a difference, but you can also see how far behind like, we're not that far behind. Yeah, and obviously, which is encouraging. Exactly. Yeah, it's encouraging to know that we're we can compete with those top level teams, yeah. and it's it's one of those things where y- it pushes you to want to go on and be like, I, I want to compete with them. Yeah, and from s- that age, I was like, yeah, I'm I'm gonna. I'm gonna try to prove this here. Yeah. The thing that I wanna, I wanna go and like play against all these top ranked teams. Well, in the international, yeah. And now I'm up playing for the for the big team now. Yeah. So I'm who up, are you I'm with at the moment? With the big girls now. <laughs> um, I'm I'm currently international wise. I'm with the senior team. Yep. And Glentoran. Brilliant. So I've been at Glentoran now. For a season, uh, a short season at that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but at least we got one. Yeah, so exactly. That, that was the big. That was the big thing. At least we got to play. I, I thought I was going to be signing a, oh, a contract and, and not actually not playing any game. Not not even pull on a shirt for that. I know. No, it's brilliant, and it's it's exciting to see where that'll go and and how that'll unfold. But um, I think you said there just something, you know. Like whenever you were younger and, and playing middle street, you looked up to Simone. But I think it's I think it's amazing now for you. There's going to be so many young girls looking up to you now as a role model and like breaking that that mold and, and going out and doing something that is radical and, and totally totally different. And it, you know, going out to America, did that give you? you we talked about that was your way of getting out of your comfort zone. Did that give you a newfound confidence in? playing or like that you could bring back to northern ireland and really push yeah. push yeah. forward yeah well obviously it, it was one of those things at the time i before i went to america i had no intentions of going i think it was in the next couple of days i was speaking to the coach and within i think another couple of weeks I, i'd signed the co- i'd signed to go out to america 
a completely wow. ch- changed of events. Yeah. I just saw it at that time. I was like, n- this doesn't come around very often. Like you, you don't get asked to go to America, to go to university and to yeah. play football. And at that point I was like, well, I've rejected it once. And I goes, if I reject this again, like, is this going to be a big mistake on my, yeah. in my, in my part? And I just thought, no, this is a sign. I goes, I'm, I'm going to have to do it. And haven't looked back. Haven't looked back <laughs> since now. <laughs> You're in the international setup and they say to you, like, if you, if you go away to America, you, you can't come back and play for your country. So mm-hmm. you're kind of like, oh, <laughs> like that's another thing that plays in your yeah. mind. Like if, if I go away, I'm not going to be pulling on that shirt again. Yeah. Like it's going to be so hard. Yeah. And I, I I don't know what was happening at that point, but then when I was out there my first spring semester um march time i got a phone call from my international coach being like yeah we we, we need you to come back and play <laughs> so no way again it, i don't know how it i i don't know whether it's the luck of the draw or yeah someone is watching over me yeah, up there yeah, he's yeah, telling yeah. me like, I, i'm gonna help you out here like yeah. so i came back in march time and went to croatia with the girls and there was just this sign of a new a new person in me that I I developed into a different player to where I actually wanted to play and yeah um like the confidence was booming out of me because yeah. I'd been away for so long and it just and then getting the call you know it's quite a personal way to you know getting that call up and yeah it w- but it all happened so fast yeah though. like I remember getting the call on the Saturday and I left the Tuesday to go away Wow. And at this point, I was like, oh, my goodness. And I, see, I think that's what helped, too. I, I, la- I went to Croatia, and I didn't have time to think about it. Yeah. I didn't have time to think about, oh, my goodness, I'm, I'm, I'm away with the international setup again. What, what's going on here? Um, or thinking, mm. I'm, I'm playing the big level again. Yeah. So it, it just all happened so fast to where yeah. I, I just thought, right, I'm going to play a football game here again. And then after, you realise... You, I've done it and yeah. y- you don't know what's going on. Yeah. But yeah, so I think going to America, it actually helps so much in my confidence mm. because it kind of gives you a new slate as well because yeah. you're going out and you're you're the new person there. And yeah. you're, you're obviously competing for your spot as well. And I was fortunate not to have two other girls who were, amazing goalkeepers and they they kept me on my toes every time yeah but you uh, need that a wee bit of healthy yeah competition like, honestly you see if it wasn't for healthy competition mm-hmm. i i you wouldn't be the player you are yeah. um yeah. i know a goalkeeping is a big big um position yeah. only one of us can play at one exactly. time so exactly. it was great to have those girls out and to be able to push me along that way and it. It, it really helped um, in that sense. And then I think just going out and being in a new setup, like you're you're wanting to prove yourself to mm-hmm. be like a great player and yeah. a great teammate. So that, that kind of gives yourself a new sense of confidence too. And then yeah. you realise that, all right, well, if I bring this back into Northern Ireland, that it'll help people realise that you're developing as a player and that you know what that you can go and yeah impact into the game Absolutely. whenever you're called upon. And Absolutely. I was fortunate to get that call upon yeah. <laughs> whenever I went to Croatia. Yeah, that's class. I think, yeah, just a whole changing environment. Like, it would it would just push your confidence and you're obviously bringing a, a different perspective and a different view and things to Northern Ireland setup and, and home setup. So I think, I, I think that's class. Um and uh, you mentioned there like whether somebody's watching over you or not, but like for me, like listening to your journey in your life, like I I just see that so clearly, how everything's just been been put into place. So, um, I think that's incredible. But just to kind of finish us off, uh, women's football is definitely on the rise. It's you know America kind of made that pathway. I know England have been doing it for a few years now, but. Um, U.S. women won in World Cup and mm. there's been a real push and it's now you see it in the, the English League um, yeah. at the minute like there's big signings coming in 
uh, it's it's just booming. It's huge at the minute, and it's so exciting for you to be a part of. I think that's class. Um, but what what would you say to any young girl or woman um, who is listening to this and wants to be radical and just pursue this dream they have um, of playing football, of uh, coaching, of, of, of just getting involved? I think the first thing I would say is don't be afraid. Um, yeah, yeah fo- football, when I was growing up, was deemed as a, a male sport. Yeah. But now it's male or female. Yeah. So I think one of those things is don't be afraid to to go and pursue it. Yeah. Like I I wasn't afraid to go do it. Yeah. Um. I know plenty of girls in this country, thousands of girls now, yeah. have went and said I want to go play football. Brilliant. And I think that's that's something important that you have to take into everything really. Like yeah. even in daily life, like don't be afraid to go and push yourself out of the comfort yeah. zone. And yep. just go do it. Um. Uh, for for any girl that wants to go and play football, it it's so much easier now to go do it. You just have to find wh- where y- where you want to be. Yeah. Obviously, with me, it was Mid Ulster at the start. Yeah. And then pushing on into Glen Torn for more competitive football. Uh, there's a lot more opportunities for girls now yeah. than there was back then. Yeah. Um. In terms of coaching it's it's whether you have the passion for it or not like if, if you yeah. feel like you're gonna go and want to like give your experience or mm-hmm, mm-hmm. your talent on to someone else that 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 could be the case and i know it's kind of one of those things that someone mightn't find their their talent in playing <laughs> yeah they might find their talent in playing but they might find their talent yeah. in coaching and yeah. it's one of those ways that your your plan for someone else could could impact someone so mm. well and i know that's what's happened in a lot of cases and i'm i'm hoping whenever i'm older that i'm going to be one of those people that can help someone out too mm-hmm. where i'm able to pass my experience on to them and yeah. give them the right path to go down and yeah go from there really yeah i think uh i think that's brilliant um just something you said there and i think just to encourage you you know finishing off this episode you know, the likes of yourself and Simone and all those girls, like all those years, it makes us sound really old, we're not old, but <laughs> <laughs> all those years ago, um, I know, I know, <laughs> all those years ago, um, where there wasn't anything for girls and like now, because you took that step and, you know, you you were radical and, and, and making that change, now there's, it's paved the way. Guys, hope you enjoyed um, that episode with Jackie Burns. Just want to say a massive thank you to Jackie again. It's been an absolute um, privilege to get to know Jackie personally over the past few months um, and just to kind of watch her go from strength uh, to strength and grow in her footballing career. Um, Just want to wish Jackie and the rest of the uh, players all the best in their Euros um, playoff campaign. Uh, We're cheering them on and we're supporting them here from home. If you want to follow Jackie, you can find her on Instagram um, and facebook and you can keep an eye on uh, just her international journey as well as her time uh, in the states and just want to remind you to leave a comment a review and to give a thumbs up um, and to share uh, radical living podcast on all of your platforms and we want to get this podcast out to as many people as possible and encourage them um, to be radical so guys just want to thank you again for all your support and we'll see you in a couple of weeks with a brand new episode